All right, we'll do another uh, pension worksheet here, which will incorporate some more uh, difficulty. Now we're going to talk about gains or losses. Um, so when you have sudden and large changes in the fair value of your plan assets, or you know sudden large changes in actuarial assumptions that may affect the amount of the projected benefit obligation, this could create a very big swing in volatility in your, your pension asset or liability. Uh, how is that going to affect net income? Well, the profession, being accountants, uh, decided to reduce the volatility with some smoothing techniques. Uh, you know, really what happened is large corporations lobbied and they, they put pressure on the FASB not to, to make a, uh, not to make the accounting result in these sudden swings. So it's really what happened. You know, it's hard to say what's best. I mean, um, Investors, we would like to know is true values. However, there are a lot of investors that don't really um, understand everything, and all they see is a, a huge swing in, in earnings. And it could it could increase volatility in the stock market if we um, allow these things to hit earnings. So um, yeah, it's debatable, but that's the rule. We got some smoothing techniques, which makes the accounting a little more uh, rules based, a little more tricky. But we're gonna we're gonna go over it. Um, so one thing we do is we include the expected return on plan assets as a component of pension expense, not the actual return in a given year. So we're now relaxing that assumption in our previous two worksheets that we've been having about, you know, the actual return is the same thing as the expected. You know, in reality, it never is. Um, it always differs, even if just by a little bit. So this is one way that they smooth pension expense instead of having your actual return on the plan assets affecting uh, the pension expense, which would make it volatile because actual returns are, are, you know, they're volatile. Instead of that, we have the expected return. So we'll say, oh, well, we'll buy, uh, we'll invest in half of our portfolio in, in corporate bonds and the other half in stock. And for the stock, we're just going to invest in, say, the Russell 2000 index. Um, a bit broad index which includes lots of companies let's just say for example and we have the average return on the Russell over the past hundred years we have the average you know return on bonds we'll take an average of those and spits out a number that's our expected return and so that's pretty stable every year it reduces the volatility and what we do then is when we have a we have a difference between the expected return and the actual return, that difference then goes in other comprehensive income, parentheses gain or loss, which combines with your gains and losses in other previous years. And now, what does it do there? It's essentially an accounting purgatory, right? The OCI account, AOCI. Well, then essentially part of it gets expensed every year, much like prior year service costs. It's just expensed over time. How do we determine how much gets expensed? The corridor approach. Okay, so when this balance gets too large, we expense it. What is too large? 10% uh, of the larger of the beginning balances of PBO or the value of your plan assets. Whichever one's bigger, take 10% of that. And that is kind of the cutoff any accumulated other comprehensive income, net gain or loss above the 10% threshold has to be amortized. So let's look at an example of Callaway Company's projected benefit obligation and their plan assets over a six year period. So at the beginning of the year, it's important again, at the beginning, their projected benefit obligation is a million and their uh, fair value of their plan assets is 900,000. So I'm gonna take the greater the greater is 1 million. I'm going to take that times 10%. And I get 100,000, right? 100,000. So the corridor is 100,000. If I have any gain or loss over 100,000, I'm going to need to amortize that this year. Uh, let's just do another random one. 2016. The PBO is 1.5 million. The plan assets are 2,250,000. So my corridor is the large, I take the larger one times 10%. My corridor is 225,000. 
Okay. I don't know why this this pen keeps doing that. Anyhow. And they, they, they call it that because it looks like a corridor. This picture is a picture of the information on the previous slide, which shows uh, the value of the corridor. Remember, the first year was 100,000. So if your gain or loss is above 100,000, like say for a gain or for a loss, you would need to amortize that portion. And so I guess they, they felt it looked like a corridor, like hallway. So I take that accumulated gain or loss, I subtract the corridor. And I divide that by the average remaining service life of my employees. So let's have a quick example. Shin Corporation has a PBO of 3.1 million and plant assets of 3.3 million at January 1st. They also have a net actuarial loss of $465,000 in their accumulated OCI at the beginning of the year. The average remaining service period of Shin's employees is seven and a half years. So what are we going to do? How are we going to compute this? How, how much do they get to amortize? Well, it'll work like this, guys. You're going to take the four. Okay, let me try this again. Um, you're going to take the 465. Okay, that's not working that great. Um, you know, I really like to write it, but it's not working so well. Let's just see if I can just put the answer up on the next slide. I miss writing things, but anyway. Which one is bigger? Okay, the 3.3 .3 million is bigger. So take 10% of that. And so the corridor is 330. So I'm going to take 465, right? That's my loss. I don't get to amortize the whole thing. I got to subtract. Uh, the 330. Okay. 465 minus the 330 is going to get me to 135. I don't even get to amortize the whole 135. I got to divide that by the average remaining service life of my employees, which is seven and a half years. So this year, how much goes to pension expense? Just 18,000 when you do the math. Uh, the pen seems to be working better on this slide, so let me try to write it on here. Okay, that's working pretty well. I'm going to write this formula here. Those of you who uh, may not know, max means the maximum function. Oh god, the pen was working so well. All right, let me come on, pen. Uh, I'll live with that little mark there. Okay, divide that by seven and a half years. Dollar sign money there. All right, so that's, that's the kind of the complete formula for your pension expense uh, resulting from the amortization of this, uh, this gain or loss in your OCI. So you can see you have $465,000 of accumulated uh, gain or loss here. I forget if it's even a gain or loss, but the point is 465 and you only get recognized 18,000 this year. It's very slow, very slow. And so uh, I think we should just pause at this video.